p.m. I'd like to welcome everybody to the work session October the 2nd of Limestone County Commission. Um, public comment, I know we got several in here today probably going to speak. Um, we, uh, we do three minutes, you know, we'll give everybody time to speak, but if you have any between times or any other time, we're available. So um, there with, with the Dale Dings, um, just try to finish up where you're at because I know it's several people are probably going to sign up to speak, right, Ellen? Um, we have four. Four? Okay. All right. So public comment, go ahead. Lori Masonia. Lori, how are you doing this morning? Doing well, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. I was here at the last meeting, and so I'm here to refresh my request. Um, my request was for $300,000 of the opioid settlement or the maximum amount we could receive to start a ladies' recovery home in Limestone County. Since our last meeting, we have lost two lives to drug addiction here in Limestone County. We had an event last Saturday, and all the food that was left we took into the county homeless shelter or in the woods where people are living out there to explain to the ones that were in addiction they didn't have to live like that we were able to rescue a lady who committed to go to treatment she is in a rehab facility in Morgan County and that's what we're trying to do is let people know that you don't have to live like this there is help available for you it is for free this is a critical urgent matter it can happen to the younger generation, the elderly generation, you know, your grandkids, my grandkids, whatever. So I just wanted to come forth today and give you some statistics. We do have a lead on a house um, out in the county, and I think it would be a prime location, and we want to start with six women and a full-time house mom. We want to start small and learn as we go, because I'm sure we'll make some mistakes as we go. We hope within a year that we could expand that and possibly even open a men's home. Limestone County is desperate, desperate for these facilities. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, Mr. Chairman, I want to please ask you to bring this to a vote as soon as possible. Thank you and have a blessed day. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Doug Higginbotham. How you doing, Doug? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Again, my name is Doug Higginbotham. <clears throat> I'm a uh, landowner on Morsel Road, uh, about a mile north of Barkstall Road. And I'm going to revoice uh, my things that happened since the last meeting. Um, and my concern is a draining issue on the development that's taking place on the back side of my farm. Uh, and this, this development area borders on uh, uh, Meadows Road, okay? <clears throat> Since the last meeting, <coughs> I met with the county engineers out at the development site. Uh, at that point, they reviewed the plat that they had on the property. The plat that they had did not show a, a uh, four-foot pipe going out to my property, okay? It was not on the plat, okay? Since then, the uh, engineers have met with Morrell Engineering, and they're looking, Morrell is looking at revising the drainage issue, okay? So right now, I'm waiting on Morrell Engineer for a drainage solution. Work on the site is continuing. Now, they got dozers running out there, building streets and everything. In my opinion, the development should be stopped until we get this drainage issue resolved, okay? And uh, I guess one of the questions I got is, how often uh, is inspection done on, on these development sites by the county engineers? You know, you know, in a week's time, they can move a lot of dirt and stuff with these track holes and bulldozers. So that's what bothers me. And the question I had, if, if I had not discovered this drainage issue on my own, what kind of mess would we be in right now? And, and, and the next question is, when can I be contacted with by Morrell Engineering with a re resolution on this issue? Now, I quickly go back to the drainage problem. Looking at it out there the other day, it, it, what they did, they took equipment and pushed out like a, um, it's more like a um, basin, okay? It's not meant to hold water. It's got a, and it's got the four foot pipe going out of it. So all this water is being diverted into this basin, out the four foot pipe, right on top of me, okay? 
at the present look at it. All right. In closing, you know, I find this process of site development very disturbing at this point in time, okay? Anybody got any questions? I, I would agree with you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chicken. Thank you, Doug. As Dan's watch, just real quickly, does the developing um, lender know of the situation that's on their land? Does Bank Independent understand that the flat, the approved a flat by the county commissioners, was not built according to the flat? And does Bank Independent know the issue that's at hand? And who should be the person to address it? Um, during the recess, we'll speak with the engineer on that, please. I mean, an attorney. All right. All right. Ellen, next. Helen Thompson. Miss Thompson. How are you doing today, Helen? I'm pretty good. I don't know if I need this or not, but I'm going to give it a shot. So I'm really here to talk about two things today. One is the Veterans Treatment Court, and the second is the Veterans Day Parade. So we have had a working group going on now for probably almost a year, working on getting a Veterans Treatment Court here in Limestone County. Judge Huggins is on that working group, and he will be the presiding judge over the Veterans Treatment Court. <coughs> Thus far, we have gotten one $28,000 grant from the administration of court's office and that money went to the um, the um, community corrections organization to administer be the program managers for the courts I'm here today to seek support from the Commission for grants federal grants to further support that veterans treatment court uh, in the form of a mentor coordinator and a couple of other positions and, and some treatment programs for the veterans. In order to apply for these grants, we have to have someone to administer the grant. And I want to know, because rumor has it, the county is not interested in this. So I thought I'd just come to the horse's mouth, as it were, and find out if you guys are prepared to administer a federal grant if we write it and and we are lucky enough to be awarded money if you don't want to that's fine we just want to know right now before we start the process so that's the question on the table today uh, any questions about the veterans treatment court um, I will get with Drew and uh, Grant Ryder on those situations yeah to get back with you on all right, thank you, thank you uh, Commissioner Daly. And I do want to talk about the Veterans Day Parade. So uh, just recently, the Veterans Day Parade was handed off to the American Veterans uh, Post 21, and we're working hard to get that to go. So this year it will be on Veterans Day here in, in the city of Athens, and we need you all's support to come out, put a float in the parade, a unit, a car, a tractor, whatever you want to drive, Come out and support us. This is the first year AMVETS has been asked to do this. We're happy to do it, but we need the support of the, of the commissioners to see that through. So uh, if you want, I have the forms with me today to sign up to put your unit in the parade. And uh, I have the rules for the parade. We've got our insurance. Our permits are in. Everything is tracking. But I just wanted to make sure you all were aware and that we could get your support for that parade. Yeah, I saw the, um, you, may, you emailed us the uh, route and all that where they started at the high school. I did. And, and I did. Street and going around by Shaw Street. Come here, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We'll be 100% supportive of it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Laura Lynn Kerner. Miss Laura Lynn, how are you doing this morning? How are y'all? We're doing good. I'm, I'm different. I want to come and say thank you to this commission for having given, given the people in, that use the pools a year. And I, I want to say thank you and most of the people that are here. So would y'all clap your hands for yeah. thank, thank you. And I know that you all will be considering other things about the whole wellness center. And I just want to let you all know that 
we are behind you all in what you do for the Wellness Center and for this community, and I just wanted to thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lowell. Thank you, Ms. Turner. No Anybody further else? comments? No further comments. Thank everybody for showing up today, and like us, you know, we've said it every time. Uh, if you cannot make it in or something to make a comment, you're more than welcome to email us one in, and we'll put it in the record and revise that. Thank you. Um, so, first thing on the agenda today will be the minutes from September the 18th of 23. Does anybody have any discussion with the minutes? All right. No discussion. Next on here will be to approve the claim in the amount of $1,000,000. $62,321.24. Anybody got a discussion with any claim? All right, no claim discussion. Conflicts of interest. That shouldn't better be on the. But anybody got any conflicts of interest? Anything today, brother commission body? All right. So public hearings, we'll have none today. Resolutions and orders will be to approve a supplement resolution for the school tax. We had approved the tax the other day and. Uh, on the resolution, and it was a little paperwork typo, and Drew can look, if you have anything, this is just, Drew can alleviate on that. It, it's just gonna do two things. It'll correct the typographical error in the resolution, and the second thing it'll do is just leave no doubt that all the signatures on the one mill tax that's gonna be voted on were, were sufficient and accepted by the commission. All right, okay. anybody got any questions? Anybody discussion with that? All right. Number two will be to approve a resolution participating in the 24 Severe Weather Participation Tax Preparedness Tax Holiday, and it's February the 23rd through the 25th or 24. That should be, um, I think that's weekend. That always happens, but we do this every year. This is just a preparing for the year. Anybody got any discussion with that? All right. Number three will be to approve a resolution to establish a dangerous dog fee and registration and the authorization of the county attorney to pursue action under Emily's law or the dangerous dog law and um, Drew can alleviate on this if you have yeah. any questions for that. So essentially what this is, it, let me split it into, into two parts here. The first part is a dangerous dog fee and registry which is provided for by state statute. It's, uh, it's going to be a hundred dollars for the registration fee for dangerous dogs. So Emily's law is Alabama's law that governs when a dog is declared dangerous by the circuit court. And generally, when a dog is found to be um, a, a, a threat of death or serious injury, um, that a, a judge will declare it dangerous, and then it's either euthanized or the owner has to go through a, you know, a litany of steps in order to keep the dog, uh, one of which is that it stays enclosed uh, in, in an enclosed um, pen or, or fenced yard, something like that, but also that it's registered with the county. And so uh, that registry will be established and then the fee would be established. That's that first part. The second part is the statute um, directs that the county attorney in the case of counties take these, take these dangerous dog cases to the circuit court when it's decided that a dog may be of this nature. So um, in, in lieu of getting authorization every time one of these cases comes up, and it's only one or two a year, um, I'd ask that y'all would give me just authority to go ahead and take these to the circuit court. The expenses are low, uh, and there's a need for speed in these at, at some points too. So if y'all have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Is that the way the, re the resolution reads that will give you yes, the authority? Yes, that, that's what it'll Good. say. Okay. Anybody else got any questions? All right. No other questions. We'll be moving on. Uh, <coughs> approve a resolution regarding the below Mooresville Road um, intersection projects, and that'll be on down. Um, we just have to have a resolution to approve. To. I, I would like to talk about that a second, Mr. Chairman. Okay. That Mooresville and Browns Ferry, I guess Huntsville has three corners of it, and we have then probably the frontage lots on the other corner are still in Limestone County, but behind that is Huntsville. I essentially consider that intersection is belonging to the city of Huntsville. Now, I understand we're going to do the, that's for the turn lanes. That the, uh, yeah, this is part of that, those grants that we've received um, and through. Will all this be DECA, grant money? And it's grant money, so we've got three different sources of grant funding, so um, two of them through ADECA and one through ALDOT. Um, we have to we have to be the 
receiving authority because of the nature of some of those grants okay. can't go through Huntsville. Um, so we have to be the receiving authority, but we've been in contact with Huntsville. They're going to participate uh, and cover the costs on their share, which would essentially cover um, our match costs. So, so they're doing the signaling. The we're just doing the base turn lanes. Yes, uh, the putting, the putting the turn lanes in, and they'll design and install the signals um, outside of the actually outside of the grants, and then they'll be they'll participate um, with some matching funds on the grants. What about paving from Browns Ferry down to Greenbrier? That's that's all included that's in, in that too. In the conversation. Or the, yeah. I guess we they go to Humphrey Road, and then we go from Hunt. Now, did we get our money on uh, paving Mooresville from Humphrey on down? Yeah, that's all part of this. That's it's, all. It's all. It's all part of this. What What kind of time frame? Do you know what kind of time frame? That I don't know. The The grant writer that was involved in it. Um, this is just kind of the next step. Would be for us to uh, approve a resolution to hire an engineer to do the design for the turn lanes and put the bid package together. Um, and so that's. That's that kind of the next step as far as discussing time frames, but um, but we we do have to hire the engineer to do the design for the turn lanes. Okay, thank you. And this is that million dollar grant that we received here for just um, ARC money. What was this? A half a million from CDBG, CDBG and a million and from ARC. And so if have we got the money from ARC or just they said we're going. Checks in the mail, or no? Well, we don't. Ha we, no, we don't have the funds. That it's one of uh, checks in the we, mail. No, we we have to get through certain phases of the process. They pay as we, we can. We, okay. They reimburse us cost. All right, and uh, like I said, um, us and Shane Davis actually had me and Mark kind of Shane Davis had a meeting about the intersections here a few weeks ago. So. All but right, you are correct in in the nature of the intersection, and that that's, and so they are participating. All right, any more questions? And I know this will be in, lot, most of the road is in District 3, but it is a little bit of it that comes up in the intersection there at District 2, the north side of the intersection. So. Yeah, but it's in the city of Huntsville. Yes, that's right. But any more discussion? All right, no more discussion. Contracts, agreements, MOUs, and grants will be to approve an EMA performance grant agreement in the amount of $42,266. Anybody got a discussion with that? <coughs> All right, number two will be to approve an Alabama Department of Youth Services grant in the amount of $47,840 for the physical year of 23 and 24, and we apply for this grant every year. Anybody got a discussion with that? All right, the three will be to approve a license agreement with recovery organizations for a, some support specialist for the use of space at the community corrections. Anybody got a discussion with that? And this is something we already have to. All right, number four will be to approve an amended contract for services between the Limestone County Commission and Katie Henson, provide contract services um, coordinator for the diversion services of juveniles. Amended contract will be for a period of October the 1st to 23 through um, September the 30th of 24. Now, we had approved it last meeting. I presume it was a typo in it somewhere, right, Drew? This was actually a request for her to have um, uh, increase in her salary, but that increase will come from the grant money and is already in her budget. Okay. All right. What what did we go from and to the increase? I believe it was uh, sixteen sixty-five to eighteen. She hasn't had an increase since Sonia Anthony left, and Sonia was in charge of all the grants. But it's it's in her budget. It's it's no funds from the county. It's all paid for through this youth services grant. <laughs> Any more discussion with that? Number five will be to approve a um, consulting and service agreement or agreements with Morale Engineering Services to provide um, surveying and engineering services for the following locations. And this is Hunts Browns Ferry Road and Mooresville Road intersections, and this is Highway 20 and more for road intersection. Those are the intersections that we were talking about earlier. So, anybody got discussion with that? All right. Number six will be to approve a construction agreement for um, industrial access project between the state of Alabama and the Limestone County Commission. This is for the down at the airport. This is the Project Fox. This is 
Anybody we, got to go with that? We've all, we have in, we have this we have approved um, the agreement and received it back from the state. I think that um, this should have been to select a consultant from the state's on call services uh, contract and to enter into an agreement um, for the design services. Um, and so we like I said, I, I think this was probably just a carryover from when we when we approved the agreement. We've received the agreement, uh, executed agreement back from the state. For this contract, so uh, we need to approve the the on call services agreement, um, and the the local consultant on that on call services list is Morell Engineering. And in your packet, you have the 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 um, proposal from them for um, for they for, to provide these services. Okay, so I guess that should state that it was Morell Engineering for uh, on call services. All right, everybody got that? Then it. Any more discussion with that? Number seven will be to approve an MOU concerning rave alert between the Limestone County and the Athens Limestone County Emergency Consortium Commission District. Um, anybody got any discussion with that? Communications District. Anybody got any discussion with that? No discussion. Number eight, which is the sticker added on here, will be to approve to apply, apply for a E. FEMA grant for the District 2 storm shelter, and this is a 25% match fund of up to $219,000. This is out in Danish District East. I think the only district that doesn't have a storm uh, shelter in the district. So, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That That's correct. And I got to wondering about that when, when I first got in office. And apparently when the other districts were being built, Limestone County uh, District 2 couldn't come up with a location to put their shelter. And with our growth in, in District 2, uh, I think it's appropriate that we just treat this one like we did all the others. That's good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Like I said, that's a good deal right there. That's a good deal. Appreciate it, Danny. Thank you for your work on that. All right. <coughs> Anybody got any more discussion with that? We have no budget revisions, no merchant purchases, board appointments. We have none. Award of bids, we have none. Personnel policy, we have been doing this in the past. I'm sorry for y'all. We go through this. If anybody don't have any discussion, we'll just take it all up in one motion. Because um, I think most all of them are just transfers or move arounds or hires at the sheriff's office. All right. If anybody doesn't have any discussion, we'll go through it. But if anybody has any, anybody wants to pull out personally, let me know. All right. Number one will be to approve to hire Caleb King as a transitional EMA officer effective October the 2nd of 23. Number two will be to approve to hire Joyce Thompson as a corrections officer, um, effective October 2nd, um, approved to hire Anastase DeLong as a corrections officer, October 2nd, and approved to hire Seth Woods as a corrections officer, October 2nd, and approved to hire um, Jameens Jenkins as a corrections officer, October 2nd, and um, let's see, six will be to approve to hire Tiffany Sears is a corrections officer October 2nd. And number seven will be to transfer Ethan Wilson from corrections officer to jail corporal effective October 2nd. And um, number eight will be to approve to transfer Kyle Stewart from corrections officer or Schwartz from, from corrections officer to jail corporal um, effective October 2nd. And number nine, do we have any more names to add on the corrections officer? I do not. Okay. Now, did I know we've been putting that on there? You know, everyone, but I just want to make sure before we got going. We so, scratch that one. Scratch number nine off, and number 10 <laughs> will be to approve to hire Leroy Gatlin as a part time laborer in District 3. And if anybody wants to take any one of them up separate, or we take them all up one motion. You want to take yours one up separate? Fine, it don't matter. I don't think about him. Uh, he'll be working part time, filling in for a guy that's going to be out for about three months. And when the full time guy comes out, then he will not be there anymore. <laughs> Even though he's a Gatlin, it's no relation, so just, <coughs> just clear it up for the record. So, yeah. but if you, if you want to take it up the same way, yeah, it's fine. If it's fine with y'all, I'm good. Do anyway, I have any issue with taking them all up in one? I don't. I don't. All right. So, <coughs> that way, we'll just take all those up in one motion and let the record be known. Merit increases, we have none today. Engineer's report, Mr. Massey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we just have one subdivision for your consideration today, and it's a minor. It's Jones Road subdivision, so it'll be for preliminary and final, creating three lots in District 2. It's on the east side of Jones Road, uh, just south of Nick Davis Road. 
Um, so that's all that I have for your consideration today. Um, we have uh, completed the, the chip seal portion um, on McCulley Mill. Uh, contractor is uh, trying to get moved in later this week to do the wear and layer in the shoulders. Uh, and we are moving to Parker Road. Uh, so we're getting our equipment out there and we'll begin the patching and um, tomorrow, I believe. Uh, and then um, uh, early next week, we should do the, we should the chip seal done. Uh, and then, uh, then we'll move off of it for a period of time to go over and get the milling and patching. And then we'll have, uh, and then we'll come so that we can move the contractor hopefully directly from McCulley Mill over to um, persimmon tree, then we'll come back and get the wear and layer shoulders. So um, we're gonna, so we may have to kind of bounce around a little bit just to make sure that we kind of keep everything moving. We're trying to push these projects <coughs> through as quickly as we can. So um, right here at the end of the, right here at the end of the paving season, uh, and then, then we'll get, uh, we'll be on our just main main line, uh, main paving, just plant mix, doing patching, those kinds of things, starting to get ready for the next paving season um, through the, until the weather shifts to where we're not able to uh, work any longer. So, all right. Any other questions for me? You got anything for Mark? Thank you, Mark. All right, other business um, will be to remove, be able to sell one item on Gov Deals. It's a demo soft up in District 1. Anybody got a discussion with that? And while we're on other business, um, I want to speak on something. I think Danny may have something on other business too. Um, but we'll, uh, anybody have any other business, we'll talk about it in a second. But uh, first thing is, um, as a family that has experienced this twice this year, um, I've sit and thought about things and I've reached out to Mark and Angela. And um, I know, and I want to thank the Sheriff's Office. You know, they offer this service to when people pass away in this community, they'll bring coffee and ice and put out funeral signs and things like this. Um, and I have noticed this, which I'm fortunate where I live. I have a, a 89 year old neighbor that lives beside me and I have a 93 year old grandmother and then I have my, my mom and dad lived beside me and then plus me. So, I mean, I have the capability of several trash cans when things like this happen. So I talked with Angela about this. Um, with y'all's graces, this is something I think that would be good for the county to offer a service like this. Um, we go, when people pass away, everybody brings you all kind of food and they bring in, everybody eats off paper plates and paper cups and everything. What I would like to do is us to, and I spoke with a couple of commissioners about this one-on-one -on -one here and there, is, is to order some cans, and Angela's getting me a price on this, to get some black garbage cans with, you know, condolence can or whatever, but on, we, when we offer this service for two weeks to the community to give them time to get their refrigerator cleaned out and whatnot because, uh, and this, it would be very little tonnage weight in a year's time, but it would be something that we've lost a customer, just like if we've lost a citizen and the taxpayer citizen this community. So uh, that's something that I would like to explore. And um, she's getting me a price on the garbage cans. Um, as if y'all, I mean, I would, we would need to come up with a, I guess, a, an agreement or a way to work that. But um, I know that we already kind of do that service to a degree. We'll have people that call, say, hey, I've got, y'all come do this because of this situation, this situation. But I think that would, we could just go out and, if somebody calls and requests a can, we could go out and drop them a can off and we could service it for a couple of weeks and then go back and pick it up when the next time they, and I just think that that would be something good for the commission. I know, and I want to thank the sheriff's office. I know that service has been going on for years and, uh, they called me that night, and um, as most people know, I've lost my father this week, and you know, last week, and I lost a child this year, and I've been through this twice this year, and that is a, and they both times they've been there for us, so, and I think that's something as a commission that would be a good service for the community. If anybody has any discussion, I'm opening up for discussion, anybody got a discussion with that? I'm all for it, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, me too. I ain't got a better problem with it. Well, I just think that um, as <coughs> citizens, uh, you know, uh, because I have been down that road, and like I said, I've been fortunate, but there's a lot of people that's moved in this area and stuff that doesn't have the luxury that I have. You know, I mean, right. the luxury that I have is that I, you know, that I have the family members that live right there close. And, uh, and a lot of people don't have a, a, a way, you know, and I mean, I don't mean this bad, but trash is a nasty thing. And when people bring food and all this, you put it in a can or bag, whatever, you know, a lot of people have gotten up in a car and you don't want to have to haul that to, uh, this or that or try to get rid of it that would be something we could offer the service um and um because i know that and i mean people in this community has been good to my family i know they've been good to a lot of people that's lost loved ones and um that's uh 
and I, I know because that's just something that I have experienced personally, and I mean, and it didn't really dawn on me, and I know that until this has happened, but right. I know that that would be something that we could provide, and it would be a, you know, the, you know, you, you know, we all, we you know, we escort funerals, we do this, we do that, and that's something that you kind of your last service, we, you know, has been, you know, helping you out in the community, so helping the families out. So, um, with y'all's graces, we'll we'll move forward with that. So. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Now, any anything else for the business? I, I do. I'd like to. Uh, I've got a flyer here on a Limestone County strategic plan. Uh, I think we need to process that and or go ahead with it, and we need to come up with a scope that we want these people to address in the strategic plan. You know, right now we have no game plan for our growth. Uh, I think it's important that we start looking at our future needs, our current assets, and, and how we're going to address our future needs. The uh, rest of you folks may be smart enough to do that. I'm not. Uh, so I think it's important that we get some help with the direction of our county. Now, I think our new subdivision regulations can be a first step in that. Uh, you know, there's been some controversy over over our regulations, mostly the width of a lot. Well, should the width of a lot on a county road be the same as it is in a subdivision? Obviously, the answer is no. The common sense answer is no. You know, the speed limit in a subdivision, 25, 35 miles an hour on, a on our rural at county roads, it's 45. So it doesn't take a brain scientist to know that you shouldn't let your county roads become city streets. Uh, so what do y'all think about that strategic plan? Or is everybody good with that? Do you have any comments? I think that um, I think you're right in that getting some help in here to facilitate some public public hearings and some trying to get imp input from uh, our citizens about the direction that they want the county to be to, to, to go in the next over the next 10 20 years um, and I think that's what having bringing a consultant in can can provide us is 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 getting taking all those comments and, and breaking those down and and reviewing like you said reviewing our current um, uh, assets and figuring out how they fit into um, what the what the citizens would like to see how they'd like to see their government go um, and so I think that I think that it, it would be a, a, a really good um, option for us I think the, cons the the consultants that we've spoken with they said it, that's a 15 to 18 month process um, that, uh, which would be the public hearings and, and them actually going through and looking at, at everything. So um, I do think that the, the sooner that we get started, um, uh, then, then the better off we're going to be because uh, we have a lot of decisions that need to be made in the, ne in the coming future about, that will affect not just the next few years, but it will affect the next 10 to 20 years. And, um, so, uh, and they've told us that as, as, as we go through the process, you, that we could use them as a sounding board as we go through the process. We don't have to wait till the final report at 18 months from now. Um, this is something that we can, we can discuss with them and, and work with them, and, and they'll, they'll be happy to give us, um, give us some advice based off of, and again, it's all based off of input from the public. Um, this isn't something that's just, it isn't something that they're they're, they're just bringing a boilerplate in and, and saying oh, this is what counties should do. This is this is based off of the public and is tailored to um, to the county based off of where we are right now and where the, where the citizens want to see us go. So um, I think that it would be beneficial um, with it being over that long of a period of time. The cost is is broken out over a couple of fiscal years, so it's not a um, one heavy hit all at once on a budget either so when I and I say heavy it's a it's a couple hundred thousand dollars for uh, for them to facilitate a, a study like this 
right now we're not managing growth it's managing us so we're trying we're just trying to um, exactly to, to keep our heads above water a lot of times we, we've heard from from some in the the, uh, the last few weeks about subdivisions and um, <clears throat> the issues that arise when subdivisions are are unchecked um, and and we we in talking with um, in talking with developers because I've, I've thought based on the current economy um, that that we would start seeing development slow down um, in talking with a lot of developers and engineers they've said that yeah there has been a little bit of a slowdown but um, but the demand is still so high in this area uh, for housing that um, that yeah it, it will come at a little bit slower pace but it's not but it's still going to happen. We're not we're not at a at a at a recession stoppage of growth. We're we just couldn't we couldn't put the sheriff over at the line and keep them out. <laughs> so um, <laughs> so it's but but with that, it's not just subdivision regulations. It's not just I mean a strategic plan is is how do we how do we when when somebody moves to the area somebody buys a new home what what all do they have to go through to be able to to get their get their deed recorded get their um get their taxes filed get their utilities turned on it's, it's and then once they're here how do they make a life what is it's it's so it it's a whole lot of questions i mean we go the wellness center um has been a a, a topic that has come up it's um and and they they want to look into all of those type things as well so it's not this isn't just about reg it isn't a, it isn't a, a plan about regulation it's a plan about giving the commission a target to aim for because up to this point we've just kind of had to take a shotgun approach and just hope we hit something but if we can have a target then we can take a more rifled strategic approach to how we move forward and as grants present themselves we know whether or not they meet our goals and and the visions of the citizens of the county and we can we can apply very strategically for those things so that that's the that that I think is the goal behind it um so so um, and like I said with with you guys um I, I I think I've spoken with all of you individually and and you all want to see a scope of work um, of what it would take so I would so I have instructed the consultant to kind of give us a scope of work of what they would what they would see and then y'all can mark off what you think is not important and um, make sure that we prioritize what we do think is important so I'll bring you guys a scope of work in the near future for you to review well let's let's kind of prioritize that that we need to get going on that mark so uh, you keep saying citizens are we going to do anything, you know, maybe a committee or something to kind of get some people involved? That is that is one of their recommendations would be a strategic committee. Okay. So um, they, they would like 15 to 30 people okay. in a strategic committee. Um, so uh, I, I think that, that having a, appointments from each of you guys um, to be able to put, put that group together. Um, this would be a commitment by those citizens for the next 15 to 18 months, uh, coming to coming to public hearings and meetings and hearing what's being said, and and um, and they would be part of kind of digesting that information that's that's being presented. So um, it's it's a it's like I said it's a it's a 15 to 18 month commitment by citizens of the county to be part of that committee. So. Um, I, I think it's I think it's a good good step forward to get all of that kind of, that level of public involvement and get that level of information. I mean they they mentioned going into high schools, uh, which didn't even dawn on me. They said if they go they, they like to go into high schools and talk with the senior classes at high schools because I mean that's those senior classes they're going to be your next young families. And, and when we're talking about over the time of this the time of this plan being put in place, they're going to be the young families that are in the area and raising raising kids and um, so getting their input about what they want their communities to be and what they want it what they want to see this county become I mean that's that's important in trying to facilitate that as well like I said uh, advertising a public meeting I mean and trying to get people to come to it is 
is important, but, but go in two areas where you can say, okay, this is a long range plan. And what is it that, what is it that the youngest of that group, what is it that they want to see and what do they want to see their community become? I think it's important too. So, okay. so it, it have a, a lot of public involvement would be the goal over the next 15 to 18 months. <coughs> Anybody else got anything else? I, let's see, I got another thing here, okay. Mr. Chairman. <coughs> I'm, I'm on the roll. Please. You're on the roll? <laughs> Good deal. <laughs> I don't. I understand we didn't get a bid for our concrete pipe again. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, we, okay. we are re we're preparing the bid again and going to try to send it out and okay. hopefully hopefully get somebody to respond this time. Well, that that's kind of goes in with our uh, uh, permit to access our right-of-way. I've had a couple of occasions where contractors will tear up our right-of-way and leave it a mess. That don't sit well with me. Uh, so I'd like to us to get going on, on folks having to get a permit to access our right-of-way. I know people will put uh, a telephone thing right in the middle of the right-of-way. Well, that's not very conducive to bush hog in the road. Uh, a lot of our water lines run right along. I mean, some of them are under the road, but I think that's just something that progressed from years ago that we probably don't do anymore. So I, I think we people should ask us if they're going to tear up our right of way and uh, if they're going to leave it in a mess, then I'd like to have the opportunity to say, well, you're not getting another permit until you fix this. Y'all got any comments on that? Y'all have any problems? I don't have any trouble with it. Anytime I've had trouble, they fixed it. I think anybody that's done anything in my district. I guess I'm through, Mr. Chair. All right. Anybody else got any other business they want to bring up today or talk about? Well, like I said, I appreciate everybody, and I appreciate y'all's consideration with the cans, and thank you for your comments, Danny. Um, number two on here will be to approve to transfer the following inventory, and we all see all the things listed there below, and it's just where we're cleaning up inventory for the, anybody got any deal with that. And then number three will be to approve to remove the following from inventory, which is several items listed below that Stephanie has been working on. And, most of it's just outrun its life expectancy. Does anybody need anything with that? Or see any issue with anything on the list? Nope. All right, number four will be to approve change supplemental insurance options to Lincoln um, financial and flexible spending to Flores. Employees who wish to remain with a current insurance provider may do so, but they'll have to pay through that through their own um, service. The Limestone County Commission payroll will not do that. Um, anybody got any discussion with that? Chairman, um, Cobbs and Allen, they're assisting us with this, and they're actually here should any of y'all have any questions okay. regarding it. They're right here. They just had to okay. you're, you're good with it. I am. Um, it's going to be uh, less money for our employees and better benefits. They can expand on that. Um, but I do feel like, and Emily was also involved. I was out, actually, when they discussed this. But I do feel like that it is um, an improvement from what we've had. Um, our The last um, options that we had were pretty expensive for what we were getting. and um, But like I said, they can expand on that and give you more information either now or during the break. Well, if anybody has any issues, we're facing a recess. Y'all are more than welcome to speak with that. I know they have come no in one. and spoke with us before on it several times. So. If we go into this, how, how soon will it be that it'll go into effect? January 1st. January 1? And if anybody and wishes to keep their current provider, they're more than welcome. And this is something y'all going to sit down with the employees okay. and show them and compare so they can kind of? Yes. Sir. Okay. 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 And they will be here through open enrollment <clears throat> okay. through all of that and everything. So I know they have come in and presented to us a couple of times. Right. So. Okay. Like I said, anybody got any issues, more than welcome to speak with them or ask a question. Now. All right, nothing else. We will, uh, we have no exact session. We'll recess for 15 minutes. We'll be back at 10 o'clock. Thank y'all.